Okay, it's time for some trig. Here's our original one. F of theta is secant theta. And our interval, given that in terms of uh, radians. Same thing, we want to find our critical numbers and the absolute uh, min and max on the interval. First thing you want to do, procedure says we have to take the first derivative. Okay, so when we do that, the first derivative, the derivative of secant theta is secant theta tangent theta. Okay, so now we have to take a look at uh, finding the critical numbers. Okay, so I want to find out what my critical numbers actually are for this one. Two ways that you can find that. First thing, you look at any place where the derivative is going to be undefined. Okay, so undefined is going to occur when you're dividing something by zero. So let's take a look at both of these. Now secant is the same thing as one over cosine, and tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. So because each of these have a cosine on the bottom, what you're going to do is you're going to look at where cosine equals zero on my interval, and that's a potential place where I might have a critical number. So if I take cosine, set it equal to zero, look at my unit circle. The cosine it represents the x value on the unit circle, and so that's going to occur at pi over two would be the number that would fall in this interval. So the question is, well, does that mean that pi over two is going to be a critical number? Okay, we got to be careful here. Remember that a critical number makes this, the derivative, undefined, but it has to be defined on the original one. If I put pi over two into the original one, I'm going to get undefined for that also. So actually pi over two is not going to be a critical number because it does not make the original one defined. So because of that, the next thing we're going to look at is if I can set this equal to zero. So that will, that's what I'll do next. Zero equals secant theta tangent theta. Okay, so it's, it's for this reason right here why it was important to go over solving trig equations in pre-calc. We have to use that same concept here in order to solve this. To solve a problem like that, what you do is you split it up and you do secant theta equals zero and tangent theta equals zero. We're gonna solve both of these separately. It's probably better to put in the identity for each of those to make it easier to solve. So secant theta is the same thing as one over cosine theta. And I'm gonna write it as one over cosine equals zero over one. Now if I cross multiply, what do I get? I get zero equals one. That's not a true statement. So therefore, this first piece is not gonna give us any answers at all. So now we're gonna take a look at tangent theta equals zero. We can do the same thing. We can put in an identity for this one. You could look at your table. If you have a table of values, you could look at that as well, but I'm gonna do it this way using the identity. Sine over cosine, again, I'm gonna write that as zero over one. If I cross multiply this, I get sine theta equals zero. So I wanna look at the unit circle and look for any place on the unit circle where the y value is equal to zero because sine theta represents a, uh, a y value. Now if I look at that, the only value I'll find that fits my interval is going to be theta equals zero. It's going to equal zero, pi, two pi, and so forth, but only on my interval I'm just going to look at that number. So the, the critical number here, the only one I have, there's only one critical number on this problem, it's going to occur at zero because that's where the derivative equals zero. If the if this top part is zero, the whole thing is zero, and I know tangent is zero is zero if I check that on my calculator. That's my only critical number. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is set up a table with my endpoints and also my critical number. Okay, so I, have th I only have three to check this time. I'm going to do theta and f of theta. So I'm first I'm going to put in the left endpoint, negative pi over six. I'm going to put in the zero, that's the only critical number we found. And then I'm going to put in pi over 3. Remember, when you put these values back in, you're not using the derivative. You're putting it back into the original one. Now, this one is going to give you some square roots as part of your answer. It's probably better, instead of writing the exact answer here, it's better to actually use a decimal because that's the only way you're going to tell how big that is compared to the other numbers on the list. So if I put negative pi over 6 into here, and evaluate it as a decimal, 
I'm gonna get 1.15. Okay, so you can double check that, but that's what you should get. Remember, make sure your calculator is in radian mode because all these numbers that you have here are in radians. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is zero. We're gonna do secant of zero. That's the same thing as one over cosine of zero, and cosine zero from your unit circle, that's equal to one. So you have one over one, which is one, okay? Then we're gonna do pi over three. If I put that in there, that's one over cosine pi over three, and cosine pi over three is a one half. So if you do one over a half, you're gonna get two. So now we have our table complete. We just need to write our answer. The absolute max is gonna occur at the largest value that you see on this. The largest value, y value, is two. So the absolute max is two. That's gonna occur at theta equals pi over three. And then the absolute min is the lowest number you see on this. The lowest number here is one. Okay, so I put that down and that's gonna occur at zero. So again, highest value, y value is two, lowest y value is one. You write your answer like this, that's your answer.